Strings in programming seem to be pretty straightforward, just a bunch of characters put all together into a single variable, right? Well, it's not that straightforward, at least not for computers. Lately, I've been roaming around some low-level stuff with C, and strings in C are a pretty interesting topic. If you are from a high-level programming language, a string to you is probably just some text in double quotes, but under the hood, it's something completely opposite. Basically, strings are pointers to the memory location where the data is stored. Or more simply, just arrays of characters where each element is a character from the string. Now in case you don't know what a pointer is, despite all the controversial definitions, a pointer is just a variable which holds the address or location of another variable. It's like an address to some data that we store in a variable. Think of it as a pirate with a map to treasure. The map points to the exact location or address of where the treasure is. So the map is a pointer. Now in computers, pointers help to point or locate data in memory so if you have a variable and declare a pointer to it, you will get the address of where the variable is stored in memory. Pretty straightforward, right? But here's the fun part. When we define a pointer to a string, it just points to the first character of the string, but not the entire string. To define a string, we say char asterisk string, where char means a character, and asterisk string defines a pointer to the first character of the value on the right-hand side. Then the C language is smart enough to store the entire string in memory automatically, but how? How does it decide how long a string is when we just give it a pointer to the first character? This is where string termination comes in. Data like strings are stored in memory as sequences of characters, one after the other. Thus, the order of the characters of the string does not change while the string is being stored. When a string is defined, what if we could add a special character at the end? This way, the language can calculate the difference between the first and the last character of the string, and we can easily get the length. This is where the C people made the null character. The null character is represented by a forward slash followed by a zero. It's a special character specifically created for string termination. But where and how is this character stored? Say we have eight bytes or technically 64 bits for storing a string, one byte is used to store the null character. This character makes working with strings much easier for the language. When we define a string, the null character is automatically suffixed to the end of the string. This marks the end. So when we need to get the length of a string, we just need a pointer to the first character of the string. Rest the language can figure out on its own. Pretty cool, right? Based on this, let's try to make our own string length function. We define a function which accepts a pointer to a string. We define a count which will store the length. We run a loop over each character. We say while the character is not equal to the null character, keep incrementing the count. If it is equal, which will be true when the string ends, we return the length. Now we write the main function, where we will call this function. And that's it. That's how things like string.length work under the hood. That's it for the video. See you some other time. Thank you for watching.